and teaching us to move on to the next step when we are afraid is a very important thing in life. When you are afraid or you are frozen in some decision that you have to make about life, do you remember the people who came to you and put their arm around you or held your hand or kissed your cheek and said, well, you know, you could do this. <clears throat> or that happened to your brother, uncle, cousin, whoever. And do you know what they did? And so that new story, that new teaching changes everything for us. And it gives us a hope. And one of the things about seeing God through world, uh, God, uh, seeing the world through God's eyes is, <clears throat> you know, when you look at someone who's burned, horribly burned, maybe you've had this experience, I don't know. But you go in and see this. Just try to picture what this, what the shock was to this teacher when she looks at this little boy. You know, we look at our kids and we say that they look like Campbell's soup kids. You know, they're beautiful and their skin is so nice. I love holding kids and looking at these little pinkies, you know, their little fingers and stuff like that. <clears throat> what if that skin was burned? Seeing the world through God's eyes is to see that child beyond being burned. To see that child in a way that says there's opportunity, there's hope, there are possibilities, there are people that will work with this child by modern medicine and all the care of the medical staff, some change is going to happen. It doesn't always happen. It's not always a happy story. I know that. But you can't start out with the bad side of the story. Jesus says, by your endurance, you will gain life. And that endurance to me means with joy, with a sense of meaning, with a sense that life will go on, that possibilities are going to come to us. Besides the fact that we've got trouble now, yeah, we've got trouble. One of the great philosophers said, trouble, life is trouble. Only death is no trouble. Yes, we have trouble. But our endurance is not drudgery. Like, oh boy, one foot in front of the other. You know, you go. <clears throat> I think I've told you before, we had Mrs. Milky at the Lutheran Church who always in char was in charge of washing the dishes. This is before dishwashing. <clears throat> Milton and Dorothy were tol telling me about when they first started to work at the uh, Veterans Center, how awful the kitchen was. And uh, they were largely helpful in getting that redone. But at any rate, Mrs. Melky was always in the kitchen, and by God, if you went in the kitchen to help with the dishes, you did it the way she did it. And she never rinsed the soap off the dishes. Some of you have told us. Eh? You'd say, Mrs. Melky, uh, you know, I was a young kid. Uh, don't we rinse these? She says, no, it's good for the bowels. <laughs> <clears throat> Mrs. Melky could wash 300, if you had, we had big dinners because it was a big church. We'd have 250, 300 people at dinner. She'd wash up all those dishes, and I'm, I don't know how long it took, but it was amazing how fast that stuff got done. And some of you would say, well, it wouldn't eat off of those dishes. Well, those Lutherans, some of them are still alive, so it couldn't have been that bad. But Mrs. Melky always made it known she was the hardest working person in the church. Nobody ever doubted that Mrs. Melky worked hard and that she was not enjoying it. See, this is, this is really church life, you know. Oh, well, we have to do this. We have to do it. Oh, all right, fine, we'll do it. You know, it's that kind of thing. Is this what Jesus means by endurance? Just slug it out, be miserable, let people know if you're working hard, and always remember to blame what goes wrong or if there isn't enough on other people. Oh, Mrs. Melky, it's so bad that you had to do all these dishes, you know, with a few of the youth group and a couple of other people. Well, nobody wants to help. And if you went in there to help, by God, you better help the way she wants you to help. This was an old German lady. She was tough. But that's not the endurance that God is talking about. God is talking about a life that is full of spirit in the midst of this endurance because we are bowering, bowering that spirit and we are looking at the world through God's eyes. And Jesus was saying that is, everything is changed if you see it with the eyes of faith. 
Did you know that Bob Cousy, the great uh, Celtic basketball player, was tested and his peripheral vision was 50 degrees, or 50 percent rather, 50 percent greater than normal. 50 percent greater than normal. One of his teammates said Bob could look due east and see a sunset. <laughs> That's the kind of vision I think Jesus is trying to give us. And say, don't be afraid because you can see more. Be happy. Rejoice. God is with us. Amen. Would you please rise and receive the benediction? <clears throat> May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. <clears throat>